Hello guys, Mesolet Visual here with another video. Um, since many people asked how we do our architectural 3D design and presentation, I thought to share how we produce this 3D design of buildings and the approach and tools we use. First of all, you need to understand and ask yourself why you are creating a 3D model. In our case, we produce 3D models to communicate a whole lot of, about functionality, constructability, and visual appearance, or rather aesthetics of our designs. Today, there's a demand of realistic renders that includes 3D models that can help people visualize an actual structure. To produce a 3D design, you need a 3D software, and there are many of them. Archicad is one of those. It's not only a 3D, but a building information modeling software. It means we are using building elements to assemble our project. And these elements are information or data driven. We can control their parameters by inputting data and we can also embed or store it. This is quite interesting in that regard. When I start a project, I look at views. Normally a building consists of four views. They are key components of the overall structure, looks. Looks involves aesthetics and architecture is defined as an art. So hence, we always want to produce piece of art. I like facing out my process according to my views. I start with front as the main view. To start with a sketch is always key to lay the foundation of your concept, how it will come. The easy way to generate a concept is to sketch on a grid and let your thoughts run across the grid vertically, diagonally, and horizontally. This will simply give birth to the concept of your views. I also use Pinterest to generate um, ideas. Pinterest is always a great resource for generating ideas. You can create boards and pin images that relate to your thoughts on what you want to create. There are many tools that are important in this process. Many tools of ArchiCAD like uh, Beam, Column, and a Wall Tool. They, the way you arrange and order these components will help to give the structure character if you want to portray as an artist or architect. You can enhance the, their geometry properties with the profile manager. Maybe there are certain texture fill you want to treat your planes and surfaces. Then the profile manager is the tool I recommend for you to use more often. The concept of beam should always at the back of your mind when assembling these components. I don't let the 3D world mislead or let myself get carried away with the flexibility of these tools. Being in a position to understand the constraints of these members is pretty simple. For example, uh, a beam is a horizontal member of the structure and a column is vertical. And I will always respect these functions of these tools on the role they play. Any vertical member should be restricted to the level of the floors to make your workflow parametric. This is very, very important. It will save you time a lot. If you decide to adjust the height of one floor, all members should react to those changes automatically and should adjust its height. If I choose to use a tool for a different function because of its versatility, for example, beam for wall trims, molds, or for things like uh, skating or ceiling cornice, etc., then I will change its classification to modify its properties. I normally have this set as a preset in a 3D virtual library or the favorites tab. If you want this library, I'll put the link on the description so you can download it below. It is a preset for every tool in different variations. It is a must have resource if you want to take your design modeling to the next level. Just worry much only about the connections assembly of components. Forget about documentation. Documentation and the rest are automated. Allow yourself to focus on creativity instead of headaches of tracking settings of these tools time and again. 
because architect tools comes with the default settings. So it means you have to track some certain um, settings for your desired results before you can even think of putting them into your project. Another 3D design and presentation key component is the visual aspect of it on the screen and documentation of uh, documentation uh, documents like uh, um, printed drawings, uh, schedules, and all the likes. So of recent, versions of Advocate uh, introduced the graphic overrides options or tool, which is a pretty cool tool for me. I can set a rule on how we want to present our models. On the screen visual, it's important and makes it easier to preview and analyze your model. I have a rule set just for that, and I have different rules set for different purposes, depending on the usage. Another thing is to put my models intact. It is fun to produce a 3D model, sometimes frustrating. If things are not coming the way you want, and that will lead to overlook some of the fundamentals of modeling a building. Model things to influence the way they are supposed to be constructed or assembled on the site. This will help to produce a real 3D architectural design and visualization. So focus more on details. The quality of the model depends on how detailed it is, and this will ensure the utmost precision and accuracy of your designs. I model almost everything that could be produced to have less work on documentation, and this will improve the quality of my model tremendously. There are secondary tools like accessories from Archicad goodies meant just for putting details on your components like roof, your walls, your floors, and ceilings. Once the model is ready for the rendering process, I should be able to extract information for different purposes. For this to happen smoothly, I use a template at the beginning of the project. It's best practice to use a template when starting a new project, mainly to avoid repetition of work to keep consistent and it saves a lot of time by 60%. Trust me, I tell you. I use this um, MS Beam Architect template and there are many templates out there. I recommend this one. Check the link in the description to get it. Once I'm happy now with my model, I will export it in Collada, which is a DAE format to open it in a Lumion or to load it in a Lumion for rendering. I use Lumion for rendering. It is a real-time rendering software that ticks so many boxes when it comes to rendering, guys, I tell you. I can create movies, fly-throughs, still images, and 360 panoramas for my presentations. Um, thank you guys a lot for tuning in. I hope this gave you a whole lot of insight. Make sure you like, share, and comment on this video. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, can you please do the right thing? Let's meet again in the next video. Cheers.